Okay, I'm going to take a look at uh, a component reliability problem. This is problem number 28 and basically relates to this diagram here at the top of the page. So what do we have? We have, let's say that we have a system. This could be a control system for an airplane, um, let's say. And uh, maybe this is for the flaps, let's say. And we have some kind of connection between the input uh, from the pilot, let's say, to the actual flap control. And maybe this represents part of the control system. Maybe it's a, um, you know, the mechanical foot pedal, let's say, that connects to the, to the uh, either a hydraulic or a cable system. So the basic idea is that if the mechanical pedal, and for this example anyways, for the uh, air flap, flap controller, if the pedal fails, then the whole system fails, right? Or if the wire system has to fail and the uh, um, hydraulic system has to fail, okay? So this one says basically you'll get a failure if this one fails or if this one fails and if, if this one fails and one of these or the others of these two, okay? So we're going to write a program that does that. And we're going to use component reliability of 0 0.8, 0 0.85, and 0.95. And then we're going to do this for 5,000 simulations. And we'll actually make a small change to this. Um, and I, the analytical reliability is 0.794. So this is kind of nice because we can actually go and compare it to this result and see if we're close to that. All right. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to prompt the user for this. Okay, for the for the number of simulations. That way, it'll give us a little more flexibility. Okay, so let's start Visual Studio. Visual Studio. And this is a new project. Create a new project, and it's a console app. Next, and I'm going to say. Oh, this is chapter six, problem, uh, problem 28, okay, create. Now, as part of this, what we were, um, we know we're going to need is we're going to need to somehow generate, we're going to have to create some, uh, random numbers. Now, there's a couple of functions um, that we could use. One is a random float function, and the other one is the random integer function. Now, our reliability is going to be between uh, 0 and 1, so the random integer value uh, function really doesn't suit us too well for this. We really want a floating point number. So we can actually just go and, and take this right from the, uh, from the text. And this is on page 287. So I'm just going to put in the prototype right here. The prototype is just double because we want a floating point number returned from this function. Rand float. And then we're going to pass in the ranges. We're going to do double A and double B. All right. And then we're just going to do return. And we have the same thing. We're going to do a cast first double cast of this number because we're going to do a the rand function actually generates a integer value okay so we would have an integer division then we do this by the rand max constant now this constant's already defined and basically what it is it's the maximum number that would be generated by random by this random function okay so what this will do is generate a number between 0 and 1 okay then what we're going to do is multiply it times the difference between these two numbers, okay? So that will scale it. And then we're going to add A. So what this does is shifts it up. If this is not, you know, not zero, this would shift it up to a different number, okay? So there's our function. Okay. Oh, I may move this down. We could actually define it here, but I'm going to put this down here follow our normal standard and then I'm going to take and I'm going to put the prototype on top 
So right off the bat, I'm kind of just going out before I really think about the solution too much is I'm going to um, put the function prototype here. All right, so using name space STD as usual. And of course I need a semicolon at the end here. Okay, so there's our, our basic uh, program here. All right, so before we actually think about what the logic is that we need to do, we'll try to simplify the problem. So we'll think about it just in terms of if we were just to think about, let's say we had one component and we had the reliability of that one component, and then we'll add these two components. But the one component right now, the reliability is 0.8. So right from the problem statement, it says 0.8. All right, so let's do that. So we're gonna go in here and uh, before that, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put a, um, I'm gonna put a number here. I'll put an integer simulations. Um, and we'll use that to prompt the user so the user will enter that value in, okay? Okay, so let's do this first. C out. We'll call this one, this is the component reliability program, okay? Okay, and we'll do an end line. And then we'll do C out, enter the number of simulations. Okay. Let me call in. And then I'll do a CN simulations. Simulations, there it is. Okay. Okay. So that just prompts the user to enter the number of simulations. All right. Now what I'm going to do is I want to generate um, the random numbers. And I want to generate essentially, you know, 5,000 random numbers, okay? So first part I'm going to do here, um, I'm just going to do for integer i equal to zero. Then I'm going to say i less than or equal to the number of simulations. And then i plus plus, right? So I'm just basically going to run this, whatever's inside of here, that many times, okay? Um, the other part of this, what I need is I'm going to need to have um, some random numbers being generated and actually save these. So I'm going to call this one component one. Okay, so we'll just start with that. So component one equals, and then I'm going to make a call to this function, rand float, and then my range, of course, is just zero to one. Then I'm just going to do a C out component one. So I'm just generating a random number now. I'm not doing anything with it. Okay. And I'm just going to see it work properly. So let me do that. Let me run this. Okay. Number of simulations. Oh, I don't know. Let's just do 10 just to get it started. Oh, you know what I'm going to do? Do a system pause first. System P A U S E here. Okay, let me do this again. File save all. Okay. All right, number of simulations. Um, ten. And there it is. There's my ten numbers, going from zero to one. Uh, from zero to one, I'm generating these numbers. So that looks good. Okay. So I generated the numbers properly. All right, the next thing I'm going to do is if we look back at the problem statement, what we actually need to determine is we need to come up with a reliability. All right. So reliability is going to be between zero and one. All right. So I've got this um, component one um, double that's uh, defined. And what I want to do, I want to keep track of the number of times it either passed or failed. Let's just say uh, component one. And what we'll do is we'll do it by uh, passing. So I'll say component one, pass. Okay. And that'll keep track. I'll tell you what, I'll do component one, pass count. <laughs> and I'm not even going to write this out. I'm just going to call. How about that? Comp one, pass count. And I'm going to need that for the same one for the others. Okay. So what I'm going to do here 
is after I print it out, I want to look at it and I'm going to check to see if it passed or failed. So I'll do an if and I'll do component one. Here we go. Component one is now we're saying less than or equal to 0 0.8 meaning that 80 percent of the time essentially it passes so then i'll just do comp one pass count plus plus so i'll keep track of that all right okay so i'm just counting the number of times it passes all right so the last part here i'm just going to do c out reliability equals and I'm just going to do component one pass count. And I'm going to divide that by the number of simulations I ran. And end line. Now, of course, this is integer division problem. So I'm going to do a double here to ensure that. Um, so I don't come up with, it'd be zero every time, so that'd be not, not be good. So I'm going to cast this number here to a uh, double type. Okay, so let me run it and put in the number simulations. Oh, no, doesn't like somebody. Oh, uh, I got to set this to zero, of course. Do this. And, oh. Okay, number simulations. Let's do 100. And I've got 0.82. So that's pretty darn close to it. Okay. So let me do this. Uh, close this. Oh, well, it's initialized now. All right, there it goes. Okay. So that works for one. All right. That works for our single component, which is fine. Okay. All right. So we have some choices here. Now, if we think about it, what we want to do is we want to generate numbers for the other ones also right so we basically got to repeat this let's do a copy control copy do this for two and four three comma three okay um okay so this would be two and this would be three okay well we also need to generate random numbers for each of those right so let me do this D. B, so this now becomes a generate a random number for component two and component three. So I also need this to be component two and component three. Okay. So now I have a random number for those. Okay. So that passed. And so what we want to do is we won't call it component one anymore pass. We're just going to call it pass count okay so i'll make it a lowercase p because now i want to do it for the whole thing pass count and we'll call this one pass count okay all right so we have to think about the logic here that will actually give us a pass right so if component one passes does that necessarily mean that it passes well, no. We also need to do something about the other components, right? Now, if we had two components, component two. If we had two components in, um, and I think, oh yeah, let me go back and look at the reliability for that one. Two is 0.85. Okay, so so we'll say it's less than or equal to 0 0.85. If we had just two components um, in a series, then it would be this. It would just be, you know, component one has to pass and component two has to pass, okay? But what we recognize here is that we really want, a, we'll get a pass if component one and or component three pass. Okay? So by putting these two together, either one or the other 
is going to give us a pass. But we need both. We need a pass here or a true evaluation here and a true evaluation here in order for us to um, get a reliability of, um, in order for us to pass, right? In order for us to say that, yeah, this system worked on this time for this particular time that it was used. Okay, so let's go and run it. Now we run it. Enter number simulations, uh, 100. And there's 0.86. Okay, well, that's kind of a, that's a small number of simulations. So let me close this. Let me make a couple of improvements here. Uh, let's open this up. For number of simulations, let me put a colon here and give us uh, a space, let's say, for us to put uh, the number in. And let's also not display the numbers anymore. Okay. So I'm going to just, I, I don't need to display component one, right? I, I'm going to just delete this. We really don't need to display those. And now what we want to do is we want to prompt the user to put in, let's say, 5,000. Okay. We run it. And the user puts in 5,000. And then we get a reliability of 0.7968. Okay. Now that's pretty close to the reliability they had. They came up with 0.794. All right. Now, there's one additional thing here we want to do. And now that we feel, if we feel confident that our code works here and we're getting results that is expected, I'm going to put in one other include here. I'm going to put in the time include. And I want to seed the random number generator, okay? Which is a good idea. Otherwise, every single time I run, I'm going to get the same results. And this is what I had done on the previous example in... Um, this is example an example um, 23. Okay, so I'm just going to do uh, time dot h, and I'll put double quotes around it. Follow their standard here, and then so that's the include for time, and then what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to do the random seed. I only need to do this once. Rand, and I'm going to do time, n u l l. Okay, so the, oh, semicolons in the wrong place. Okay. So now every time I run it, it'll be slightly different. Okay, file save all, and we run it. And I'm going to put five thousand. And there's point eight zero 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 two. Okay, pretty close. But let's do this. Let's increase the number of uh, simulations. It sort of follows the so-called law of, of large numbers. So the closer, I'm going to do. Let's do a hundred thousand. Enter. 0.79225. Okay, that's closer. Let me do it again. This time I'm going to run a million. Uh, there we go. A million simulations. 0.7939. So right there, it's 0.794. Okay, so that looks really good. Okay, so here's the code for this one. And... You know, you'll find this one's actually in the solution set. But you can see how I did it. It basically went through and just did it step by step. You know, prompt the user first. Of course, put the loop in there. Generate. I, I recognized that I needed to generate, um, use the random float um, function in order to generate uh, numbers between 0 and 1. I could have done the integer one. Of course, it would have taken more thought and how I would actually write, the, use the code in here because then I would have to divide it by... Um, you know, I could do from the zero to a hundred, right? And just do from 80, if it was less than 80, then it would be um, passed for the first component, less than 95. And then the other one was less than 90, I think, or 85, 8.85, sorry, 0.85 and 0.95, okay? You could have done that if you wanted to, but this works out really well, okay? So here is the end of this particular problem.